هستان بسم الله الرحمن الرحیم و به این است این این دنیم آقاد به بنیفیسن در مرسی فو هلو ایوان و ویلکم تو تو دیز ویلینار لیت می انتردیوس مایسلف آیم مهدی قومی در کارشار کانسر آف دی انبسی آف اسلامیت ریپابلیک آف ایران Before we start, it is necessary to explain that this webinar will be broadcast online through the Iranian Cultural Center social network, I mean Facebook and Instagram. And also a recorded version of this webinar will be available on our website. The address is www.iranculture.gr. Uh, first, a very brief explanation about this webinar may be helpful. Uh, so far, there have been various round of interreligious and interfaith dialogue between Islam and Eastern Orthodoxy. This round of dialogue was scheduled to take place in Tehran, however, it was postponed because of the COVID 19 pandemic. Due to these circumstances, uh, with the coordination of uh, the General Secretary of Religious Affairs of the Greek Ministry of Education, Dr. Kalangis, and uh, also ex-cultural counselor of Iranian Embassy, Dr. Uh, Dr. Helmi, it was decided to conduct a preliminary discussion through a webinar. Uh, the topic is religion and health and uh, the impact of religious thought on physical and mental health, as well as the impact that the COVID-19 pandemic era has had on religion and religious people. No, it's a great pleasure for me to introduce our speakers briefly. Also, we send all participant biography to this Skype group. Uh, first, uh, the webinar will be started by the speech of Dr. Taskiri, the head of the Center for Interreligious and Intercultural Dialogue of the Islamic Republic of Iran. Then, His Eminence Metropolitan Ignatius of Demetrius will give a speech. The next, the next speakers are Dr. Nikolaos Asporilis, Deputy Director of the Volos Academy, for theological studies. Then, Dr. Niknam, Professor of Tehran University and Director of uh, Molecular Immunology Research Center in Iran. Then, uh, Reverend Dr. Stavros Kofinas, Coordinator of Network for, uh, of the Ecumenical Patriarchate for Pastoral Healthcare. Then, Dr. Eslamiya Adakani, Professor of Philosophy of uh, religion and ethic at the University of uh, Religions and Denominations. Now, uh, respectfully, I like to invite the head of the Center uh, for Interreligious and uh, Cultural Dialogue of the Islamic Republic of Iran to continue and manage the webinar. Uh, please, Dr. Taskey. خوشحالم که دوباره در یعنی گفتگوی ویبناری شرکت می کنم پس من بر خود لازم می دونم که از شخصیت های حاضر در این ویبناری تشکر کنم First and foremost, I'd like to thank all the other participants who have participated in this webinar. As original, I'd like to ask you to ask me 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 to ask me. It's recording the memory that I had with his eminent metropolitan Ignatius of Mitchell who visited Tehran and Estonia and we were together. I would like to thank him. Thank you, Dr. Osmirulis. 
Also, I would like to thank His Eminence, Dr. Aspirolus, the Deputy Weather Academy Director. I would like to express my gratitude to His Excellency uh, Dr. Stavardis Talwars Kofianas. و همچنین از جناب آقای پروفسور دکتر محمد حسین نیکنام که لطف کردن و در این نشست شد و از پروفسور دکتر سرحسن اسلامی که خوب ایرانی ما هم که در این اجلاس تشریف دارن سپاس و تشکر دارن My thanks also are due to uh, Professor Dr. Islami Arbun Khalif. Albert Mo Mohi Bodin Ke as <laughs> his dig Kenora Hamboshin Chedar Yunan or Tenda Chedar Tehan to Ozure Yasad Varu Baham Nasdik. Really, we prefer to have a meeting face to face so that the spirit and the body be close to each other and meet each other in Tehran or in your country. Mama, in the middle of the fallen week, we get in top on one Mukadami, Baroye, is also about the Kahach to do child, cannot a hand washing by go to go for the music then go start the Tanya or hospital. We are really grateful for this seminar and consider that the first step in order to be on the side of God in the future and resume our regular dialogue. <laughs> فی موقعی موضوعاتی را انتخاب کنیم که برای جامعه ما حد مشکل کنند. این فرق یک فرقی که تیم در می هم چوزن فور دیس ویدار ایز بری امپوتن این ایز بری امپوتن فور دی ایومن سوسایی این نورمالی بی کنسنتریت آن در تیم در کن سال فرم پرابلم آف دی انترنشن کمیونیتی این گفتگوها تبینگر بعضی از حقایق است که شاید برای خیلی ها پوشیده باشد. These kind of talks would dialogue would reveal and uh, would reveal the truth that may be not that may not be open to many people. و این حقیقت ها این از ادیان آسمانی همیشه حیامور حیامور روحی بخش، پیامور، پیامهای زندگی بخش برای جامعه بشری است. And in fact, uh, the message of such dialogues, such dialogues are messengers, or the messages to the world, the messages of, uh, in fact, uh, life giving, and the messages uh, that boost the esprit and the morale of the occupants and the people. ما اصول متعددی در آین انسان داریم که اگر بعضی از آنها در جامعه تطبیق می شد بدون شک بسیاری از مریضی ها و بسیاری از وباهایی که امروزه در جامعه بشری منتشر بود از بین می رفت امینه شرار دیوک بیالوگ که پولیتیزموت اسلامیکیز مقرده است ویران Αγαπητέ ακόλουθε του μορφωτικού κέρδη της Περισφίας της Ιρανικής Δημοκρατίας του Ιράν, αγαπητοί καθηγητές και σύνεδροι, ζούμε σε έναν κόσμο που χαρακτηρίζεται ολοένα και περισσότερο από την εξάφρωση της βίας και το φαινόμενο της συγκεκτικής ρίζοσφαστικότητας. Γινόμαστε καθημερινά μάρτυρες εγκλημάτων που διαπράττονται στο όνομα του Θεού της θρησκείας, ενώ η κάλυψη τέτοιων εγκλημάτων από το διαδίκτυο και τα μέσα ενημέρωσης αυξάνει τη φρίκη και τον αποτροπιασμό διαδίδοντας παράλληλα μέσα στις σύγχρονες κοινωνίες το αίσθημα ανασφάλειας και αβεβαιότητας, καθώς και την εχθρότητα έναντι του άλλου, του διαφορετικού. <Κι> Όπου και αν στρέψουμε το βλέμμα μας, βλέπουμε είτε πολέμους θεσκευτικούς στη φύση τους, είτε εγκλήματα και σφαγές που διαπράγονται 
στο όνομα κάποια θρησκεία. Αναφύγοντα αυτό που χρειαζόμαστε επιγόντω είναι να επανεξετάσουμε νέα μοντέλα ειρηνική συνύπαρξη, διαλόγου, ανοχή και συμφιλίωση, νέου τρόπου επικοινωνία, αμοιβαία γνωριμία και αποδοχή μεταξύ των διαφόρων θρησκευτικών κοινοτήτων. Να αναζητήσουμε μεθόδου υπέρβαση του φανατισμού, τη μυσαλλοδοξία και τη συμμετοχή σε φάβου κύκλου βία και αντιπίνου. Η ευρύτερη γεωγραφική περιοχή στην οποία ανήκουμε αποτελεί ένα πραγματικό σχολείο προ μια τέτοιου είδου υπέρβαση. Η κρίση που προκάλεσε η πανδημία του COVID-19 μα έδωσε μια καλή ευκαιρία να εκφράσουμε τη βαθιά δέσμευσή μα στην υπέρβαση τέτοιων φαινομένων θρησκευτικού φανατισμού με σόφο τη στερή συνεργασία για την ανακούφιση των λαών μα. Όσον αφορά στην Ορθοδοξία, θα πρέπει να υπενθυμίσουμε ότι θεωρούμε και θεωρούμαστε αληθινοί χριστιανοί μόνο στον βαθμό που παραμένουμε πιστοί στην Ευαγγελική Εντολή τη Ανεφόρου Αγάπη και Αλληλεγγύη προ όλου του ανθρώπου, ανεξαρτήτω φυλή, φίλου, θρησκεία, κοινωνική κατάσταση και προέλευση, μια αγάπη που περιλαμβάνει ακόμα και του εχθρού μα. Η ανάγκη για έναν περαιτέρω, ευρύτερο και βαθύτερο επιμελικό διάλογο μεταξύ των θρησκευτικών παραδόσεων είναι απολύτω κρίσιμη. Καθώ έχει αποδειχθεί από την ιστορία στο παρελθόν και πιο πρόσφατα ότι οι θρησκείε ω σημαντικό πνευματικό και πολιτιστικό παράγοντα μπορούν να συμβάλλουν με διάφορα μέσα στη συνεργασία μεταξύ των ανθρώπων ενάντια σε κοινέ απειλέ όπω η πανδημία του κορονοϊού και τα παρόμοια. Που θέτουν σε κίνδυνο την ίδια την ύπαρξη τη ανθρωπότητα. Εάν οι θρησκευτικοί ηγέτε δεν συνειδητοποιήσουν την ευθύνη του να αγωνιστούν για τη ζωή και την υγεία των ανθρώπων του, ο κόσμο μα όπω το γνωρίζουμε σήμερα θα εξαφανιστεί ω αποτέλεσμα τη ανικανότητά μα να προσφέρουμε ένα πραγματικό νόημα στον κατακαιρματισμένο κόσμο. Αυτό το διαδικτυακό σεμινάριο είναι μια συνάντηση που πραγματοποιείται στα πλαίσια του διαλόγου μεταξύ των δύο θρησκευτικών παραδόσεων. Πρόκειται πράγματι για ένα επίκαιρο γεγονό με σκοπό να αντιμετωπιστεί το κρίσιμο θέμα τη σχέση μεταξύ θρησκεία και υγεία. Όλα αυτά τα χρόνια η Ακαδημία Θεωρητικών Σπουδών του Βόλου, τη οποία έχω το προνόμιο να προεδρεύω, διευκόλυνε αυτό το διάλογο, διοργανώνοντα διάφορε διαθρησκειακέ συναντήσει με πνεύμα σεβασμού των διαφορών του άλλου, με ιδιαίτερη έμφαση στι διαχριστιανικέ και διαθρησκειακού διαλόγου, που εξυπηρετήθηκε επιτυχώ από το τμήμα. Διαθρησκευτικών σπουδών τη Ακαδημία. Με αυτέ τι σκέψει, θα ήθελα να χαιρετήσω αυτή τη διαδικτυακή θρησκειακή συνάντηση Ελλήνων και Ιρανών, ευχόμενο κάθε επιτυχία και ευχαριστώντα θερμά τόσο του συμμετέχοντε, όσο και εκείνου που εργάστηκαν για την οργάνωσή του. Το μορφωτικό ίδρυμα τη Πρεσβεία τη Ισλαμική Δημοκρατία του Ιράν, το Γενικό Γραμματέα Θρησκευμάτων του Υπουργείου Παιδεία του κ. Γιώργου Καλαντζή για τη διευκόλυνση εκ μέρου Ελλάδα. Με οποιοδήποτε τρόπο του διαλόγου και βεβαίω του συνεργάτε μα στην Ακαδημία Θεολογικών Σπουδών του Βόλου. Σα ευχαριστώ πολύ. Thank you very much. Thank you. 
اهمیت جامعه بشری را به عهده گیرد متشکرم جناب در این بخش از جناب آقای پروفسور محمد حسین نیکنام خواهش مندیم که مقاله خودشنو ارائه بفرمونیم Now I would like to request Dr. Mohamed Hussain Niknam to uh, deliver this lecture. The floor is yours, sir. Dr. Mohamed Hussain Niknam, as a member of the Iranian government, and 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 a member of the Iranian government. Uh, professor Nicknam is a distinguished professor and a member of the Academy of Medical Sciences of the Islamic Republic of Iran. I have a majority of the university that is on the University of Iran for patients. I should just define it. And also he is in charge of the medical journal. The floor is yours, Professor Nicknam, please. Professor Nicknam. Hello. Uh, Hello and good morning. Do you hear me? Yes, go ahead, please. I don't know what about the hearing or not. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. In the name of God, the compassionate, the merciful. It's a great pleasure for me to be part of the Greek Iranian uh, interfaith webinar. I said so I would like to offer my sincere appreciation to the Islamic culture and religion organization and uh, to the Center for Interreligion Dialogue and Culture of the Islamic Republic of Iran, His Excellency Dr. Abuzar Ibrahimi Tochamon, His Excellency Dr. Mahdi Kashmiri and his very efficient team, and uh, to a cultural advisor of the cultural center of the embassy of the Iranian or dear brother Dr. Tomi for uh, continuing very valuable initiative of this dialogue between religions. Furthermore, it's a great uh, honor for me to be with our brothers from Greece today. Hence, is one of the important subjects of divine religions. A healthy human being who possesses physical, mental, social, and spiritual health is the ideal human being in all divine religions. Discussions about the viewpoints and teachings of different religions regarding health and the teachings have descended from the Almighty Lord are the most and shed light on invisible truth. On the other hand, the believers of these religions consider the health teachings from the standpoint of their faith and based on their beliefs. So they are committed to pursue these teachings very seriously. This approach in individuals and religious societies leads to the improvement and enhancement of health. <coughs> Considering the highlighted position of health subjects and the teachings of divine religions, studying these teachings within the collection of viewpoints throughout health leads to the comprehensibility of discussions, of course. And with the brief based view to our teaching by the believers of divine religions, new horizons will be revealed regarding the improvement of health in a number of societies. On the other hand, negligence in the study of health subject divine and religious texts is the deprivation of humankind from a great collection of wisdom and knowledge related to health which has its roots in divine knowledge. Today, I'm going to share with you uh, 
under the title of religion and science can go hand in hand in response to COVID-19. The outbreak of MERS-CoV-2 virus and COVID-19 pandemic has caused widespread changes in the people's lifestyle, while impacting on their religious and spiritual behavior, and caused a lot of questions for the people of faith and believers in the field of theology, ethics, and to the students all over the world. Open kick off the prevalence of the novel coronavirus reaching to a pandemic level, leading to the shift or and closure of certain rituals and religious practices in the world in order to contain the virus. Once more, the relationship between science and religion conflicts or reconciliation and the religious efficiency in facing such diseases was discussed among the world scholars and, and received renewed attention. By presenting evidence on what has happened in um, as a system based on Shiite Islamic beliefs, I would like to emphasize that the two concepts of science and religion in Islam is their differences are linked together and interact each other and in the Islamic view, not only the science and religion are not in conflict with each other, but since the essence of religion is to give insight and the essence of science is to give knowledge, these two are in most cases complementing, interacting and collaborating each other in identifying and achieving the perfection and true development. This could be studied from different aspects in terms of coronavirus spread and how religion faces this phenomenon. First of all, since coronavirus has not yet been well understood and for the very reason, for the very reason, contradictory news are published about the disease and how to cure it, this seems to be a kind of trial and error in facing the virus all over the world. This increased people's agitation, and it could be said that the most critical aftermath of coronavirus outbreak is individual and social anxiety and the stress in the whole world. Inviting people to keep a peace of mind and a of trust and moving toward inner peace is the first benefit of religion in facing coronavirus, achieving tranquility and calming anxieties. Since religion and spiritual beliefs are essentially critical in the promoting mental health, and in the stress management, religion transforms the whole world in the eyes of the believer and changes his or her perception of himself or herself, the creation and surrounding incidents. A religious person is the one who sees himself under the full support and mercies of God, but in the whole universe. As such, he feels spiritual confidence and peace. He knows God that is those of good and blessings. Thus, such person takes all events, even calamities, and misfortunes and graces of God and trials come from him. Such person no longer feels disappointment and frustration in facing failures and ups and downs in life. Because of him, God is a supporter and remembering and calling God can give him peace of mind and tranquility. God said in Holy Quran, Surah Al-Rahd, verses 28, Unquestionably, 
by the remembrance of Allah, hearts are assured. Promoting social solidarity through religion is another issue in this regard. A religious spirit and sense of spiritual obligation in different parts of life would further encourage a sense of social solidarity, resulting in highest level of collaboration and synergy to tackle common rights. What has shaped and pursued in here, in Iran, was the manifestation of the effective role of religious leaders, leaders to promote health and to stand against health risks, such as the initiative by the Supreme Leader, by the Supreme Leader, as the prominent spiritual authority and the highest state of shift in God to COVID-19 pandemic nationwide, of which I'm going to briefly touch upon the important ones. The Supreme Leader as the highest religious authority in the Islamic Republic of Iran since the start of the pandemic conveyed many messages and expressed his deep appreciation and thanks at this medical community. Statements such as, your job is very valuable. Such efforts not only add to the value of the medical and nursing community, but more importantly, it will bring you to the divine reward. Honored health responders as martyrs is another very, very important decision by you. Less than 20 days since the outbreak of COVID-19, considered as martyr of service. The health minister wrote the letter to the Supreme Leader later, and while thanking his agreement with the suggestion, called it an honor for the American health and medical community. Authorization and inclusion of Qatar Sharia funds were designed and provided hospitals and medical center rooms. 1 million facial masks, 500,000 liter medical alcohol, and 6,000 disease diagnostic kits. For the next phase, the Razali Holy Shrine, Shrine allocated money to solve urgent needs related to the pandemic. Uh, agreement with the lead of absence and pardon of detainee was another initiative. It was just a couple of days before Norwood's March this year that the Supreme Leader expressed his agreement with the suggestion of the Chief Justice of Iran for pardon of several groups of prisoners, even some with security charges, as a result of which more than 10,000 prisoners were discharged and set free. This made many families who were uh, concerned about the spread of the disease in prison, of, uh, of the disease in prisons, happy. Uh, I'm going to uh, pass some of them in order of uh, shortage of time. Uh, initiative by the Holy Shrines to protect the consents. The Supreme Leader in his New Year's speech again in March, on closing holy places and religious meetings being to the interest of the people. He said it is unprecedented to close everywhere, given the holy shrines. Friday prayers, you know, it's a big weekly congregation of prayer throughout the country, and daily congregation of prayers in mosques, but there was no other choice. There is to interest of people to observe these things so that the Almighty God willing may this plague lives us. Agreement with withdrawing 1 billion euro from National Development Fund, which its utilization means the agreement and of the Supreme Leader to tackle and manage aftermaths caused by the spread of coronavirus in the country and the movement to further serve to the nation. He expressed agreement with withdrawing 1 billion euro from the National Development Fund in a communication given by the President to the concerned agencies. It was stipulated that the needs of the Ministry of Health and Education should be met.
from the source of supply and, if possible, from uh, domestic productions using knowledge-based uh, companies. Uh, I will uh, stop here. I have uh, more to read and more to share with you, Excellencies, but uh, I will stop here and uh, maybe uh, uh, the rest of the program I have the, uh, I have the opportunity to share it with the rest. Thank you. Monsieur Kelly, nous allons avoir les professeurs Nick Norm pour sa salle de musique, le réveil musique à deux témoins, Baden Napoletro, Jean-Paul Calvert, Tadji et Jay, et bien, à ce sort de sorte. Thank you very much, Professor Nick Norm, for your very concise and useful speech. Thank you very much, Professor Nick Norm, for your very concise and useful speech. Thank you very much, Professor Nick Norm, for your very concise and useful speech.
have been confronted with a crisis which calls into question and tests every certainty and security, individual, national, religious, or other. COVID-19, this new scourge that devours the flesh of humanity, threatens the human species itself, compelling the national governments to take strict measures that otherwise could never be imagined by any of us who live especially in the context of the Western liberal democracies. Movement restrictions, partial closure or, or closure of schools and businesses, quarantine in specific geographic areas, and international travel restrictions, forced social distancing were just a few of the public health and social measures taken by governments. Worldwide, to prevent or limit, sometimes with greater success as in Greece, and sometimes not, as in the major European countries and the United States, the lethal spread of the virus, especially in vulnerable groups of the population, that is, our grandparents, vulnerable groups, but quite often also younger people and children. It was a crisis which showed in practice that globalization is not just a theoretical or ideological construction which came up in the mind of our directorate who supposedly controlled the destiny of humanity, but the very reality we live in, our, global, our own global villas, where everything that happens on the other side of the planet will quickly knock on our door. In contrast to any kind of nationalism and world building, the coronavirus pandemic showed that borders are nothing but human constructions that ultimately cannot protect us from any real enemy, one that threatens human life itself. At the religions, the Christian churches in general and the Orthodox churches church in particular, what role do they play or can they play in the midst of this tragic situation? Being an important factor of crisis management, COVID-19 has clearly affected the spiritual life of Christians from all over the world, and especially the Orthodox faithful in traditional Orthodox Christian countries. It appeared, however, that once again many Orthodox churches were unprepared to face timely and effectively an enemy who does, not, who does not threaten some few or part of the population of the planet, but it is fate to every single human living being on Earth. Orthodoxy has been embarked for many centuries in the chariot of a meta-historical view of reality, was unable, as the current situation has shown, to deal with sobriety and above all with appeal to its rich tradition proposing solutions that will theologically and pastorally offer to the people, not only to its flock, a message of hope and trust to the land of history, who himself overcame death and offers us generously eternal life. Sometimes avoiding to express immediately a formal position or to undertake a clear initiative, the Orthodox Churches mainly their institutional, institutional expression, in most cases were obliged to implement the measures taken by the national governments, an attitude which has led to the view that the Church is wide, without resistance submissive to the emperor, to state power, unable to resist against, as was characteristically said, a new persecution of Christians or Christianity in general or an anti-Christian conspiracy from the West, as it was the case with the Church in Moldavia, for example, but also in all the countries, especially in connection with 5G communication networks, or the vaccine related to Bill Gates, Microsoft, etc., which was intended to hurt the authentic faith. The closure of the churches, the ban of the liturgy and the services, especially in the difficult times of the Great Lent and Easter, it par excellence the communion practice, focusing on the means, common or multiple spoons, and not on the essence of the matter, were considered as a casus belli for those from the faithful, ayahas, clergy, and in principal lady, who they choose a military stance slashing against an indivisible enemy which plots against orthodoxy, 
by attempting to corrupt or alter the traditional faith of the people. The frequent ambiguity of the three institutional church in all these cases, despite of course the fact that there were also hierarchs and theologians who resisted, who resisted this kind of ecclesiastical populism, attempting reasonably to provide a compassionate compassionate interpretation of the present situation by offering consolidation, consolidation sorry, to the needy uh, people, nature had often strengthened more or less such phenomena of, of fundamentalism that threat any historically and theologically well-grounded opinion expressed by reputable and eminent voices as propaganda against the traditional faith, cutting off any possibility of a severe dialogue. So, what should be done in this respect? How Eastern Orthodoxy could address the present situation? Let me now turn to specific ways by which Orthodoxy could contribute to the ongoing discussion around coronavirus. I will limit myself only to the following two points, through which I would like to highlight the important role religion can play in the midst of this pandemic, contributing to the unity of the people and the relief of their pain. The first point is that individual responsibility, along with social distancing, has become one of the most popular instructions on the side of politicians and scientists as the most effective weapon in the fight against COVID. At the same time, however, it was understood as a challenge, if not a threat, especially for the Orthodox Christians who boldly claim to experience the social and communal, uh, communal aspect of Christianity. I'd say it appears to be quite difficult for the Orthodox to change their mentality and adopt an attitude that opposes, as they believe, the very heart of their communal existence. But is it so? And by it true that the Orthodox often opposed to Western individualism in favor of a communal and personalistic perception of human identity as the core aspect of their tradition, one should be ready to admit that this individual personhood debate is more a naive exaggeration if not an ideological construction, construction rather than a fact. Without going into detail here, one cannot become a person that is an identity that derives from a relationship, unless one is once and for all an individual, that is an entity which inclines towards the other. This relates to the fact that individual responsibility requires a long and gradual process of deep individualization, that is of taking seriously into account of the hypostatic aspect of human identity against the predominant role given to ecstasy which focuses on relations. It goes without saying that relationship and otherness constitute two crucial aspects of human identity, as they have been interpreted by the Greek patristic tradition. In the, midst, in the midst of this current war, a certain balance is required so as the human being to reach its fullness without being lost in the valley of an often in impersonal communal life. During this pandemic, individual responsibility arises as one of the most important factors that can guarantee public health. If the goal of Christian life is, is theosis, deification, that is the personal and at the same time communal salvation of the entire cosmos, a necessary step should be taken from the Orthodox towards the conservation of human health against threats like the coronavirus, but also, and perhaps more important, against conspiracy theories and mentalities that put at the very being of humanity. In this light, individual responsibility is closely related to the ontology of humanity, since it means to take seriously into consideration both the individual entity and the interconnection between human beings along with a strong conviction that human life and materiality matters. Matter already here in history and not only in the afterlife. 
A second point is the ascetic ethos, and especially a focus on repentance. In this time, COVID-19 calls us to move forward a new lifestyle. If we all agree that more or less the abuse of the planet and the continuous consumption of these resources is one of the main reasons of the appearance of virus diseases and pandem pandemics, the time has come to adopt a way of life that takes seriously the needs of all creatures that live in this world, not in, man in a managerial or functional way, but primarily in an ascetical or liturgical one where the health of the creation depends upon our call to work as priests, as priests of creation that offer the entire cosmos to the hands of God. This idea, followed by a certain ascetical ethos, which helps to reduce energy consumption, to reserve the planet pollution, to worry about the environmental crisis and the catastrophic and problems that have arisen in people's daily life, daily lives, such as global warming, includes increasing the risk of forest fires and so on. Uh, in other words, to adapt a new lifestyle means not just to follow certain orders or moral values, but primarily to pave a new path, a new way for life based on an ontological and not just ethical interconnection between humanity and the rest planet. By way of conclusion, the coronavirus pandemic with the challenges it posed in all levels brought to the fore the theological and pastoral poverty of certain Orthodox churches, but above, above all highlighted the need for hermeneutical criteria upon which theology as the prophetic voice of the Church will be able to evaluate and interpret the situation at hand, projecting through the richness of its apostolic and patristic tradition certain solutions that can indeed to be a lifeline not only for the existential treatment of COVID, but also a legacy to deal with similar crises in the future. The Church drawing its being from the end of time from the eschaton, it is called in the midst of this crisis to form a new ethos, a model of life that above all will respect the Creator Himself, who has offered the gift of life generously. During the Eucharist, which constitutes the Church itself, the faithful are called to offer to God the Father, through the Son in the Holy Spirit, the gifts of creation, in order to transform them into an adult to eternal life, thus offering a foretaste here and now of the coming kingdom. This does not mean that death at every, the infection by virus by virus viruses, have ceased, have ceased or will cease until the final crisis to affect us or determine our lives. Lazarus, according to the gospel, was resurrected by the Lord, according uh, to the gospel, as I said. Nevertheless, he died again. Corruption and death permits the whole creation, and although they may be suspended under certain conditions, by no means they can be overlooked or underestimated, especially when it comes to, in, to the integrity and health of every human being. Ultimately, what God, what God really expects from us, especially in this state of emergency, it is mercy and not sacrifice. Thank you very much for your attention.
में रिलीजियस फैशनलिज्म एंड फंडामेंटलिज्म और फैनेटिसिज्म हम लोग तो चेंज कर रहे हैं वो ये बात मैं भी आज भी तो नहीं लाओ तब मैं तो इंसानी है न्यूज़ तो एंड यू मेंशन यू रियली रिव्यू ऑफ द ह्यूमन रिलेशन तो बोले भी फार दिए रही و تقبل مسئولیت فردی در جامعه تفاوت قائل بشیم and we should make distinction between the individual and the individual responsibility in the society و یک تعریف جدیدی از مسئولیت شناسی برای اوکی انسان با جهان قراره بدیم تا بتونیم زندگی متناسب با وضعیت فعلی با آنچه که در آیت در رو خواهد داد And we have to give a new definition of the relationship between individual and cousins. We will have a more interactive process. We will have to change the way we see the world. We will have to change the way we see the world. We will have to change the way we see the world. We will have to change the way we see the world. And in that part, civil awareness, we have trust in the divine teaching which has been given to us through divine guidance. Thank you very much, Chinese. Orthodox faith used personhood healing 
and the identity of the person. And this is also something that has come out and been challenged in the code about violence. Personhood is, is, is central in Orthodox spiritual life. Describing what personhood is cannot be based on some philosophical concept or psychological theory. For a Christian, personhood is its relationship, is how he, one relates with God, how one relates with oneself, and how one relates with his fellow man. It's a relational type of, of faith. For Christians, faith means I believe in someone and not in something. Personhood is far more than one's personal human personality or personal identity. If there is suffering today, it is that we have lost our sense of personhood, of our sense of relation, of relating. Moreover, we have lost the way to find this relational type of spiritual life. And the COVID virus has brought this into crisis because it has cut off the possibility in many ways of relating to one another. Personhood is found in one's ability to relate freely in love so as to participate in the personhood of the other and the personhood of God. Our pers personhood is found in a triadic relationship between our being, God, and others. Thus, in the face of this truth, we must realize that the patient, the ill person, and every man that suffers is more than a wounded person. He is a broken, fragile, and insecure person in which his relationships have in some way broken down. Our goal, our aim as pastors, is to bring man back into the communion and the community of persons on all of the levels of existence. And the COVID virus has given us a challenge as how we have to succumb the traditional ways of doing this, finding ways of bringing people to existence, relationships, and finding new ways of relationships. This poses a great challenge, particularly in our times because of the anonymity that is developed in today's world. As COVID-19 continues to assault the people of the world, we must ask, what are we doing to enrich our ministries in caring for those who are suffering and those who the, the grieve from the consequences of the virus? For the medical and healthcare professionals and clergy, for the lonely and isolated, for those who have encountered family turmoil, other than providing food and material goods, how are we ministering to the, living, the spiritual needs of those who are now economically and socially deprived? What have we done to deal with the religious paranoia that seems to be lording over us during this time of fear? But here we must also ask another question. Do people really want to be here? Do people really want to be ministered to to overcome these situations? And many the paradox of things is that many times people do not. They feel very comfortable in their own little world that they have formed in their own house, in their own society. True personhood exists in humility. And for us to be able to heal, we as pastors must teach people to be humble and accept life situations through our own humility. If we are not human, if we are not humble in this and try to reach to the person at the level that he is at, we will not be able to heal him and make him new beings. So what is the content of healing, particularly in face of this COVID virus? Nurturing and healing does not depend solely on an extensive and on an exclusive relationship between the pastor and the, and the patient. Personhood is not limited to a single relational relation experience. Nurturing is, and healing is fully experienced within one's total, when one totally participates in the Catholicity of human and divine nature. When one inwardly takes part in the Catholic love of God as expressed in the Catholicity of the community of saints, on earth and in heaven. One cannot be healed alone. In Catholicity, we are all healed together. And this is a crucial and vital 
point in Orthodox faith. True healing occurs when a person realizes who he is, who she is within the cosmos and, the, and discovers the spiritual dimensions of life as a new being, discovers the possibilities God has given him to live regardless of the situation in which he finds himself. If suffering still persists in the world today, it is because this cosmos rejects truth in the person of, the, of God. And we who live in this world separate, separated from the capitalistic of God's love remain in disharmony. I will conclude by saying that our identity as pastors comes with our identity in the way we ourselves interact with the world. We are not separate from the world as, as God is not separate from the world. In orthodoxy, God was incarnated and entered this world. God is always present in this world. And we as pastors must be present in the world, remaining as people who continue and bridge our gap between God and man. We have to show people not only what we know, but the way we must exist. Concluding, I would like to say that we are entering a difficult, difficult time in history in which all the institutions and establishments that once offered a sense of stability are being questioned. Well-defined social and cultural entities of the past seem to have been liquidated. In the name of multiculturalism and multi-faithism, all seem to be one, but there appears that we have lost the one. There is not a someone outside of ourselves that keeps us together. Only if we live in harmony can we find a sense of solidarity and overcome the chaos that now prevails in our societies. A solidarity that respects personhood on all levels of human existence. Solidarity, solidarity is based on building bridges and facilitating cooperation. The cooperation now needed between religion and science, together with health professionals in the community at large. Solidarity is co-suffering with the other, participating in one another's pain. It is the ability to touch one another as a common human being, as common human beings created by God, and to offer comfort in pain. This is, it is only with this type of solidarity that we will be able to cast out our fears and take the anger that is being expressed in disastrous ways today because of the virus. For love cast out fear and discretion comes all anger, as we say in the Bible. If our mission is to help people find spiritual content in their lives and provide hope for the future, we and our differences must seek together to find the one. That one, as a philanthropic God, will unite us and will teach us what to say, how to pray, and how to love, and how to nourish. Thank you.
حکومیت اراده اراده انسان هر دو جنبه می تواند کمک زندانده و سعاد بخشی انسان ها باشد این تجوات است که در قابل اجتماعی من بین تنبیت از اما 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 سپریتوالیتی کن really lead to consolidation and solidarity among human beings that can help them to solve any problem. We must utilize the teachings of all religions in order to help survive mankind. بیدن 19 تاریخ های مختلفی رو برای روابط انسانی داشته باشید. چه برخورد شخصی انسان با خودش و چه با دیگران و چه بونیگی ارتباط با خدای خودش رو باید به گونه این تاریخ با وضعیت قبل از کوبید 19 متخابه باشید. In fact, man's relation with himself, with others, and with God should be different from what had been before the COVID-19. to separate 
the mental maintenance and of human being from physical aspect and give a credit to the former in the cost of their life. Yet, and their hands with 
they speak to us and their legs will bear witness to what they used to wear. So, there is no real separation between body and soul. Physical and non-physical aspects of human beings are interwoven together. Fifth, we are separate. We are responsible for our acts and actions. So we have to look out after our body's parts, such as our eyes and ears. Our actions do not happen in an empty space and without our body involvement. Therefore, we are commanded to be aware of our body parts and organs and guide them correctly. In this respect, the Quran teaches us, and I quote, and do not follow what you have no knowledge of it. Indeed, the hearing and the sight and the heart, all of them are responsible and will be questioned of their acts. Six, because of this bodily importance, this very body will be rewarded or punished eternally. According to more than one verse of the Quran, the divine reward and punishment is directed to this physical body, not just to our souls. So, the good dwellers enjoy the good weather and the, the scenic landscapes in the paradise, living in pleasant shade, while the disbelievers and bad dwellers will suffer bodily and their skins will be burnt in hell. Seventh, the human beings are advised to look at what they eat and consider how different elements constitute their food regarding this issue the Quran says, let's not look at their food. We pour water in abundance and we split the earth in clefts and we cause therein the grain to grow and grapes and clover plants. Eighth, according to the Quran in teachings, to the Quranic teachings, having a healthy and powerful body is an important privilege and can be a condition for leadership. When God appointed Talmud or Saul and the king of children of Israel, they protested against his capacity because he was not rich enough. The prophet answered them that God has given him enough knowledge and bodily power. And by this answer, the, the, he convinced them. Ninth, again, a great deal of the Quranic verses, Islamic teachings and rules aim bodily affairs, such as washing and kids, cleaning it and taking care of it. Other verses advise us what to eat and how much to eat and drink. The word ayyabat or good lawful food is frequently appears in the Quran and as Muslims we are encouraged to choose healthy and legitimate food and to avoid al khabais or corrupted and rotten food. Indeed, the culture of ta'am or food is very rich in Islamic tradition. Hence, and finally, while there are many teachings in the Quran concerning the body, there is little attention directed merely to our soul. For example, when early Muslims asked the Prophet Muhammad about the roof or soul, God alternated their way of thinking, saying, and I quote, they ask you about the roof, say the roof is from my God, and you have no knowledge but a little. Instead, they are, they are advised to take care of their body and what they put into it. Because through our body, we can nourish our soul and take care of mental health. According to, to German saying, Dear man, east was a beast. The man is one, what he eats. Our food will change into our body, and our body is our first and last place from which we understand the world, act in the world, and change the world. In some, Islam, in various forms, invite us to consider our body as a remarkable gift, an extension of divine act, and and interest our very existence. Therefore, in any health approach, we should take this point seriously and instead of forgetting our embodiment, we have to remember that we are indeed embodied selves. Thank you. Yes, so, but he has as Asatid Gerami.
یا تلیغه مداخله باشه ما گوش خواهیم داد جناب آقای دکتر نیکنام بفرمایید گوش بگیم Now, if there are any comments or intervention, the floor is open. Now, uh, after the doctor, Nina Nisam is ready for comment. Please. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Tasfiri, for giving me the floor. Uh, I would like to take this opportunity to uh, add a few words to what I said at uh, my time during my presentation. And I have two points to be uh, discussed with Dr. Kofina at the end, if I, if I can. Uh, following the advice of the, lead, the effort by, uh, by various groups of people to materialize the same, one of the manifestations of cooperation between uh, religion and health was and still is the all-out efforts of the clerics and seminary students in different arenas to help patients and uh, people in need, which include uh, persistence visit of hospitalized patients, expressing support and sympathy with the nurses and health workers, continuous visit and talk with patients suffering high level of stress, assisting patient expressing difficulty in exercising religious practices, performing their religious orders for the deceased and the cadaver, soliciting partnership of the donors and helping distribution of food and natural beverage packages, creating a cheerful atmosphere and holding events of religious feasts, Inviting the core band for live performance in the hospital open space. Organizing innovative programs such as Happy Birthdays events for medical personnel with flowers and uh, gifts. Uh, arrangement for broadcasting prayer call and other supplications from hospitals sent pages, pager participation and cooperation for uh, handing out subsistence support packages for the health uh, workers and disadvantaged patients. Uh, religion can also confront coronavirus based uh, on its authoritative and commanding dimension in the context of preventing the spread of the virus. As such, the jurisprudence as part of the Islamic teachings has the merits to work together with medicine in resolving modern uh, problem. Uh, Islamic uh, jurisprudence can work with medicine to address health issues through the pragmatic and constructive application and adaptation, adaptation of its rules to limit the spread of the novel coronavirus. Three such rules, very briefly, are uh, outlined uh, as I'm going to uh, briefly touch upon. The rule of no harm, la zarar, la zarar, la zarar, no harm. According to the rule of no harm, if a religious obligation causes harm, even only probable harm, and fulfilling the obligation leads to the spread of disease, the obligation can be disregarded. This is one rule in jurisprudence. Second one, the rule of unlawfulness of complicity in sin. Based on this rule, those who enhance disease spread throughout their violation of health principles, such as social distancing, and if aware of their deeds or complicit in sin, and this is an unlawful act in Islamic jurisprudence. And the last one in my talk, the rule of exigency is terror or the terror. From the Islamic jurisprudence point of view, if someone is in an emergency situation that necessitates the use of forbidden or unlawful things to avert disease, forbidden things include contaminated, impure and harmful materials likely to cause harm, 
he or she can do so to the amount required, disinfecting surfaces using alcohol-based substances to prevent the spread of the novel coronavirus can be defined as falling under this rule. Uh, in conclusion of my talk, let me uh, share with you a few words. Uh, pandemics such as COVID-19 are not merely the spread of a virus, but sometimes they could be seen as a spiritual phenomenon, revealing the evident and hidden layers of societies. By replying on efficiency of uh, religion and jurisprudence as part of Islamic teachings, I tried uh, in my talk to show that religion has no conflict uh, with medicine, but at the same time, by spreading spirituality and mental calmness at individual and social levels, and by getting closer and closer to the inner peace to reduce stress and anxiety, as well as uh, placing religious prohibitions and changing rituals through application of certain jurisprudential rules in facing coronavirus, it can significantly help medicine in preventing further prevalence of COVID-19. I enjoyed uh, the uh, very rich talk of uh, uh, Dr. Aspirolis and uh, Dr. Kufinas. Many interesting points uh, I found in those uh, speeches. I am uh, in total agreement with uh, Dr. Kufinas about the difficulty of definition of spirituality. It is laboriousness part of spiritual health, if uh, it's not the most difficult one. Uh, I would like, uh, I have a question uh, regarding definition of uh, spiritual health. Is there any acceptable definition in Orthodox about spiritual health, Dr. Kofinas? Thank you very much. Yes. I don't think that we, uh, 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 Dr. Spruce make a, uh, also say, I don't think that we actually use the word spiritual health. Uh, we could talk about uh, a healthy type of spiritual life, but I don't think that we could talk about spiritual health. Of course, we're playing with words in English, and that may be difficult. But if we if we talk about a, a, a healthy spiritual life, that means that it's a life that allows someone to mature spiritually and allows for his relationship with God to mature equally with his relationship with mankind. So there has to be a, a, a very good balance between that. Um, my my uh, um, what, what I, I often use as an example is what we say the balance in Christ Jesus's life where he had a life of prayer and a life of ministry. He was with his father in prayer and his disciples could not find him alone. And he was with people teaching and healing. So if this is an example of healthy spiritual life, I think it's an example of spiritual life. Even in monastic tradition, you have this balance because in monastic tradition there's you know the life of prayer when one is either in the church or in their cell but also you have to be involved in the community working for the community uh, associating with the community eating with the community so there's a balance there's always this balance uh, based on the definition of uh... Uh, WHO, uh, there are four dimensions of health, four dimensions. One is physical, then mental, then uh, social, and recently 
uh, in the recent uh, five decades, uh, the term of spiritual health. In Iran, in the Academy of Medical Sciences, after a long time discussion, uh, we reached uh, to the sort of the spiritual health definition acceptable for the most of the involved authorities. In other words, it's still not acceptable by all uh, members of the group. Uh, I will be more than happy to share with you uh, the definition uh, that we uh, came up, uh, Dr. Kufinas, and uh, I would like uh, to have your uh, opinion uh, on that. I think this exchange of uh, views around the definition of the spiritual area of continuing the discussion between Greek-Iranian uh, interface webinar around uh, religious and health. Uh, I, Thank I, you. I, I would like to add something. Uh, sure. I think one of the problems that we have is that we as religious workers try to approach the medical field and we try to use terms that will satisfy them to become accepted in their field. And sometimes that liquidates our own uh, terminology, our own beliefs. And, and because their field now has become so secular, we end up becoming just as secular as they are. That's, that's right. very dangerous. That's very dangerous. Very dangerous. That's particularly this is, this is the dif this is the difficult part that I mentioned. That, that is particularly so in Western civilizations. That's right. And not so much, for instance, here in Greece or maybe in Iran, where there's type of a, a synergy of religion and culture. But in Western civilizations, I, I, I can tell you that I spoke something similar to what I told you and I used, and, they, and, they, and, and, and people came to a, to a conference of healthcare, of, of pastoral healthcare providers, and they told me, you were very da daring in using the word God. That's right. <laughs> uh, You're had, right. There was a survey taken where people were asked what their spiritual life was. The least of their spiritual life was praying. It was walking in the forest. It was even taking their dog out for a walk. So you see, that's what we're dealing with now. We're dealing with sure. the type of terminology that it has it's separate from whatever whatever religious identity has. And that's the big problem that we're all facing. Thank you. I'm in, Thank you. I'm in agreement with you. That's right. You're right. Shakirim Ma Umi Varin Ke in Jalase Bon Manu Ejalase Mohadamati where we've not ballet we've not high bad dikim camele Thank you very much. We hope that this uh, session will be considered as a pre-webinar for the consequent webinars in the near future. خیلی از مفاهیمی که مجهول بود در جامعه بشری بروز کرد به اجتماعی. In fact, after the outbreak of COVID-19, many unknown concepts pop up in the human society. در برخورد با این پدیده ما از یک طرف ایثار داشتیم و از یک طرف خودخواهی. In confronting this phenomenon that is this catastrophe, I mean COVID-19, on the one hand we had sacrifices and on the other hand we had selfishness. از یک طرف انسان دوستی نشان داده شد و از یک طرف مال پرستی و دنیا پرستی به هر قیمتی که شده. On the one hand we had uh, in fact philanthropy and uh, humanitarian efforts and on the other hand we had materialism and uh, in fact money mongering. یکی از مهمترین اسراری که در قضیه کووید 19 پیش اومد این است که عقلانیت دینی همه ادیان بدون استثنا بعد تحجرگرایی که 
سابقا ادیان متهم بودن غلبه کرد one of the outcomes or one of the in fact corollary effects of covid 19 outbreak was it's not it's, this is among all religions i mean religious uh, rationalism among all religions overcame the fanaticism which was somehow uh, uh, visible before that و ما شاهد بودیم که مساجد کلیساها عبادتگاه ها که در واقع مهمترین امر رهبران دینی است همه اینها به خاطر سلامت انسان عملا متوقف شد تا این اقلانیت را به اثبات برسونه and we also witnessed that the churches the mosques the temples all closed, all closed. Uh, to show uh, religious rationalism for the sake of protection of human life. همونطور که جناب آقای دکتر نیکلام اشاره کردن بسیاری از قواعد عقلانی و ادیانی مثل قاعده استرار، قاعده ضرر تمام اینها مستاقهای جالبی رو پیدا کرد. And in fact as Professor Nicknam mentioned many religious principles and commandments or rules such as the rule of duress in fact they found uh, the reference in the post in, in, during the covid 19 uh, outbreak and uh, during the pandemic many religious authorities in iran issued a fatwa that is religious decree that a person who communicates or causes the communication of disease to another person is responsible for this act and should pay the, uh, the, the 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 blood money or should compensate for this transmission of disease of course if it is not intentionally در پایان من از همه اساتید گرامی و محترم کمال تشکر رو دارم که در این نشست ویبناری شرکت کردن I would like to express my heartfelt thanks to all honorable participants who contributed to this webinar و از رایزنی محترم فرهنگی جمهوری اسلامی در یونان و جنب آقای Dr. Khumi, I thank you very much. My special thanks also go to Dr. Khumi, the uh, cultural advisor to the Iranian Embassy and his colleagues. Well, he is a Tlashah General Dr. Hermi, who made the statements from the beginning. Thank you very much. Also, I would like to thank Dr. Hermi for the preparations he made for the webinar to be held. امیدواریم که در جلسات بعدی بهره های بیشتری داشته باشیم. I hope that in the future we will enjoy more of your comments, lectures and contributions. خدا نگهدار همه سروران عزیزم. خدا حافظ. God bless all of you. Thank you very much and goodbye.